Here we go. Well, welcome everyone. Um, we have a few people dropping in and we're gonna have a few more, I'm sure. Um, my name is Sean Fraser. I can start my video too. Good morning, everyone. Welcome everyone that's here. Um, we wanted to get together. It's been a few months since we've had a, a user group call and uh, wanted to have one and start kind of start the process up and, and going again. Um, before we start, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself again. I'm Sean, for those of you who don't know me, if there's anyone who doesn't know me. And maybe we could go around, we could just start at the top of the list and, and everyone could just introduce themselves and maybe say where you're from. And if there's some interesting project you wanna mention or something, please feel free. Let's see, I think Adam, you're at the top of the list if you'd like, if not just, or Danny, you're at the top of the list. I think the list is dynamic and, and different for each person. Okay. But, I'm talking, so I'll go. I'm Danny. <laughs> I'm a clinical system specialist at Options for Southern Oregon. Um, interesting data project, huh? We're in the midst of adding some new fields so that we can to, to some forms and in our electronic health record system. Uh, the one we use, not the one we own. But uh, yeah, so that we can get some more reporting automated instead of being done painfully by humans. Very good. Hey, I'm Adam Jones. I'm the CIO at Appalachia Center. Uh, we're working on, uh, we're always working on building uh, Power BI reports off of our, our data warehouse. But uh, in particular, actually, we're working with you guys on getting a data extract uh, off of that so that we can integrate with uh, the Florida HIE emergency notification system. Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, welcome, Adam. Thank you for, for coming today. Thank you very much. Let's see. Bob, are you, are you with us today? I am, Sean. I'm going to have to hop off and get a phone call, but I'm Bob Hodgson with... Um, options for Southern Oregon. And I apologize for having to take a, a call right at the start of this, but um, work uh, with Danny. We just implemented Credible. Uh, well, July 1st will be a year since we went live. Before that, we were in Profiler. So we've, we have the data warehouse with Profiler. We found it very useful. And so now we're doing uh, redoing reports and figuring out how to combine information. Lots of challenges. Excellent, excellent. Let's see, who else would like to introduce themselves? Anyone else? Hey, hey everyone, uh, I'm Fina from Bancroft, Fina Nash, and um, you know some things we're working on um, similarly to uh, you know what others are saying, Power BI dashboards, um, and really building out our data warehouse from um, you know, from all of our enterprise systems, not just our EHR, but, um, you know, we've extended it to like our HR data, payroll data, um, you know, and, and financial data. So, um, you know, just continuing to build that out and really having all of our, all of our data in the data warehouse, which, you know, is, is a process. <laughs> Well, and it's it's fortuitous that that uh, you're here, Fina, because we're presenting on some stuff from Bancroft today, and uh, we're going to illustrate some of that, some of those items. Um, and with that, I'll introduce our speaker. Unless there's anybody else who wants to introduce themselves, I can introduce myself. I didn't oh, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Imori. Um, I work for Bancroft. I am a data analyst and. I know Chris is, um, he's gonna go a little bit more into what we're working on, but I know currently I'm in the process of working with Chris and other people to try to build out, to add an additional tab to our clinical dashboards. Excellent, thank you, Amari. Thanks for, for coming today. Wonderful. Um, well, to introduce our, our presenter today and to get the ball rolling, um, 
Fina introduced herself and Mari introduced herself. And then we're going to let Chris introduce himself as he gets going and we'll let him share his screen. Uh, Christopher Norman is a member of the Bancroft team and somebody that we've worked with here at Pinnacle in addition to Amari and Fina for several years. And we're going to show some of the, the dashboards that, that Chris has done in Power BI. And they're very impressive. And they, they span uh, quite a bit of area and across different domains and different subject matters. Um, Chris exhibits uh, the qualities of a good data and business intelligence person. You know, he's curious about the data. Um, he, he spends the time to, uh, you know, understand what he's doing and he's curious and he's also spent the time to uh, master his craft at, at developing dashboards. And so um, it's been a very interesting and very productive process to, 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 to work with Chris and Amari and Fina as we develop the data model and build that data model out from various sources, like Fina said, you know, whether it's from the, the CCP product and all of the custom forms that they've built. Um, and we're, we're tracking all kinds of things like incidents and um, all kinds of uh, you know, injury and just a bunch of different areas that Chris will touch upon that they've customized in their, in their CCP implementation, um, as well as HR data, uh, time punch data, COVID data. You know, we're pulling in data from you know, outside sources, the New York Times, uh, from Google Sheets all over the place, and then building data models that, that can then be used further downstream. So um, I hope that I've given, given that enough of an introduction, Chris. Feel, uh, please, feel, please feel free to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the project, and we're excited to, to see what you're going to present. Thank you very much, Chris, for being here. No problem, Sean. Um, thank you for having me. And of course, I'm going to start with uh, asking if you can uh, hear me well. Absolutely. All right. So uh, as Sean said, my name is uh, Chris Norman. I, I work at uh, Bancroft with uh, Fina and Amari. And um, it's an understatement to say that, um, you know, we've worked with uh, Pinnacle for a number of years now with various aspects of our data um, on top of what Sean said, you know, with our EHR, we moved on to our HR system. We're also looking at um, pulling in some Salesforce information in the near future. So, yes. We're, we're definitely um, pulling in data from different directions, but I mean, really at the end of the day, it's so that we can um, continue to improve our process of painting a picture uh, for staff with, a, with the story we're trying to tell with our data um, and also use our data to refine processes, um, help staff um, ensure that their workflows are as accurate as possible. Um, that their data is as accurate as possible. And, you know, that, that, that's a never-ending journey, right? Um, that's something that we're just going to continue to refine, you know, as the months go on. So with that said, I'm going to uh, share my screen. Uh, let's see how I can do this. Let's do the tab. So I can do it. You're on mute, Chris, in case you're speaking. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yep. Probably with the share. All right, so let's do, let me share my whole screen. Oh, share, don't share system audio, share. All right, can you guys still hear me? Yes, yes I can still hear you. 
uh, beautiful. There's a little checkbox that said like share system audio. I kept that unchecked this time. All right. So can you guys still hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Uh, you guys know I'm always notorious with these uh, issues sharing my screen. All right. So um, going on with this tab, um, email phishing, um, you know, we, we, we deal with that. We deal with that with, uh, you know, all of our businesses. You know, it's very important to us at Bancroft to make sure staff are as educated as possible, you know, with phishing attempts, making sure they, they don't click on malicious emails and whatnot. And so what we started to do was uh, gather this information so that we can load it into Power BI so that way staff can see in real time what their uh, staff rates of um, clicking on um, phishing emails are. Um, you know, where are our departments where, you know, we need to um, focus on additional training resources and whatnot. So with so many other things we're doing, um, Power BI continues to be such a fantastic resource for this in the sense that, you know, if we, if you just want to look at a specific department, you click that department, it'll tell you exactly, you know, how many times, if any staff has clicked on phishing emails, we can go higher up in the organizational levels. And also we can look at this by the type of phishing attempts to kind of see trends of which type of emails are more prone to be phished. Are there specific times of years where phishing emails are more prevalent to be clicked on and things like that. So that's why these uh, dashboards are a powerful tool. And with that, we also track our progress of internal training for phishing awareness. Um, and one of the things um, that's pretty powerful with that is, can we see trend analysis if there are departments, if there are times of years where our training attempts are not being fully utilized? Are there specific types of trainings where we need to double down and focus to make sure that staff are completing their phishing training. And what I mean by that is at Bancroft, phishing awareness training is pretty much mandatory for all staff. But one of the things that we also do is we also send examples of phishing emails to staff. Now they're not necessarily malicious in general, but they completely mirror what a phishing email would look like and we track to see what staff are clicking on which emails to see if themselves or teams or service lines need additional training. And with Power BI, we could see trend analysis on that pretty easily. Next up, uh, incident reporting. Um, so at Bancroft, uh, we do track various uh, forms of incidents. Uh, we have different incident categories, verbal abuse, neglect, physical abuse uh, with uh, clients that are um, admitted to Bancroft and Power BI allows us to track all of these records pretty seamlessly over the course of years. So with that, we could track things where incidents could be uh, severe enough that they have to be reported to state, um, state government agencies. And also, are these incidents that are investigated by ourselves in the state, are they substantiated? So this is a powerful tool to be able to report both to staff members that are responsible for maintaining this data and also for all staff awareness. Um, this is a easy way to paint a picture so that way we can see trend analysis based on our incidents. Also, one of the things that we look at is our um, reports of incidents that do have the go to the state and our timeliness in sending those reports to the state. So we have various KPIs, various metrics on when certain reports are supposed to hit certain uh, metrics as far as going to the state, being investigated by the state, um, hearing back from the state, doing follow-up investigations. Power BI, Power BI allows us to pretty much be able to track this in real time and to be able to um, isolate if there's specific departments or specific incident reports in which we need to like talk about if there's any delays with reporting and if we need to fine tune our workflows and how we're, how we're conducting these. Also, um, 
pretty cool is that Power BI allows us to kind of visualize our incidents. So as far as, you know, if an incident is state reportable or if, you know, incidents are substantiated based on the type of incident, um, the severity of the incident, the location of the incidents, we can kind of, you know, see a heat map over a geographic area of where our incidents are occurring. Uh, next up, we're also tracking emissions. And with that, I mean both emissions and discharges. So um, various departments and the organization, they have various tabs and visuals that they utilize in real time to see our emission rates at Bancroft. And not only that, but they can see when we have like, you know, a slump in emissions, they can see where our census vacancies are, like what group homes in real time has vacancies. They, they can track all these in real time and they can use these to help further their decision-making. We have uh, residential census tracking. This is just um, an example of um, what staff are using in real time to make sure that, you know, we're, we're confirming um, where our residential clients are uh, sleeping as far as group homes. We are making sure that our billing is as tight as possible. Um, we make sure that, you know, we're, we're tracking these things in CCP, of course. And, you know, when you think of services that can be voided, services that need to be changed, people where retroactively their status as far as re residential might change, might be, go from occupied to leave of absence, they might go from that, they might go to hospitalization. So the records might need to be changed. So what this uh, page you're looking at right now is a pretty powerful tool to make sure that staff are not missing any billing, that the billing is correct. And also it makes sure that we don't send billing out and then retroactively we put in a discharge date prior to that, which means that every bill after that should be voided and make sure that our residential billing is as clean as possible. Uh, next up, um, we also, as Amari said, we're tracking various forms of clinical data. So what you're looking at right now is a, um, a series of visuals that allows us to track uh, client emergency room visits. Um, I can, it goes without saying how many um, decisions can be made, you know, with this data as far as client care. Um, and we have various KPIs and metrics under the hood that goes into um, a lot of our um, clinical data. Um, and this is good for all staff at Bancroft to pretty much see, you know, by department, um, by age group, um, by person served, how many folks are going to the emergency room. And not only that, but we're tracking this through our clinical data itself, but th these visuals also allow us to tell how many, um, how our data as far as um, incident reporting also leads to emergency room visits and to try to see if there's a correlation between the two. Um, similarly, we're looking at hospital admissions. Um, kind of the same data we're looking at, but one of the key takeaways um, with this data is that unlike just the emergency room visit, which happened on a day, you can also be admitted to the hospital, which then includes a date range. So one of the things that um, the clinical team likes to see with this is you can break down by month, by person, by age group, and by program, the total of hospital days, when we sum up all of our clients, how many days together are folks in the hospital between their admissions and discharges. Next up, primary care visits. Um, you know, folks going to, going to the doctor, we're looking at the same thing, but this also allows us to see trend analysis on missed appointments, which is a very powerful uh, metric on, on this tab. They wanna be able to see like, you know, how many folks are, are getting appointments, how many people are going to appointments and how many people are missing appointments. Cause you know, if, if we're having a trend of people missing appointments, they, they definitely wanna be able to talk about that and see if, you know, if anything needs to be addressed. And as you can see, there's a visual on here to see if um, somebody's last uh, primary care visit was a long time ago. So they can see if they have to do something about that as well. Similarly, we're looking at specialty care visits. So that's everything else. You know, you go to a heart doctor, you go to a GI, you go to a chiropractor, you go to uh, even just an ENT. They're, they're tracking all of this. And similarly, they wanna see if people are going to their appointments, if they need to go to appointments, 
or if they need to get back on the horse and make sure that, you know, they go to see their uh, specialty care uh, doctors. So these are powerful tools to make sure staff can easily um, keep track of these things. We're also tracking HR information. So right here, you can we can um, see at, at the organization what are our staff vacancy rates. Um, and this is a powerful tool in itself to see, you know, which um, which departments do have vacancies, which are under budget, which are over budget. And over time, we're working to be able to get trend analysis on on this too. This is um, one of my personal goals. Um, for this fiscal year coming up is that, you know, we could see vacancies in real time, but it would be great if we could see uh, vacancies over time, which we're gonna, we're gonna keep needing to refine our data. We're going to keep working with Sean and Pinnacle to update our um, dimensions to make sure we're housing this data correctly. But this is just a, a strong first step, but you know, we have further plans for this data. Um, we're also able to look at staff turnover in real time. Um, we have various, various tabs and visuals that um, kind of looks at uh, retention rates, turnover rates, because, you know, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, staff are happy at Bancroft, um, that um, we're keeping track of staff needs and whatnot. So data like this is absolutely vital to making sure that you know we're, we're um, doing what we need to do to make sure that staff staff are happy at the organization and um, this uh, these next few slides are used extremely heavily by staff um, it goes without saying um, we use uh, power bi to to track various uh, elements of uh, COVID tracking for both our staff and our um, our population at the organization. So you can see here, this is kind of like a, a one-stop shop to kind of see the status of every single active staff member at the organization. So basically supervisors, HR, people in leadership positions, they don't need to um, go too far to kind of say, okay, really quick, I want to know um, who's va who's vaccinated at the organization. I want to be able to click a button and just say who's out of compliance with, vac with um, you know, state mandated uh, vaccine compliance. And as we know, that can be different depending on the month. It could be different based on the brand of the vaccine you had. And we have all of this logic built into Power BI. So you could have got Pfizer, you could have got Johnson & Johnson. It will track when you got these vaccines. It will track if you got a booster, when you got a booster, when you're eligible for a booster, and when you're eligible for your next booster. So it, it tracks all of this for us. Similarly, um, for COVID testing compliance, you know, you, you have staff that might be exempt um, from vaccinations. Um, and you have uh, you might have people that have never gotten a vaccine, and this allows us to, at the drop of a hat, be able to say, okay, with all of these uh, vaccination rules in place, just I, I just want to know for my staff, for my department, who needs to be tested, and are they tested? Are they out of compliance? Do we need to talk to anybody? This this just takes all the guesswork out of it, and. We all we have to do basically is uh, stay up to date to make sure you know no there's no regulatory or rule changes with uh, vaccines per brand, and uh, if so, we just make any logic changes we needed to we need to. But outside of that, we um, this can tell us in real time you know who is compliant with their uh, their daily or the weekly COVID testing and um, who needs to be tested. And Similarly, um, just like with testing per department, we can say based on certain rules, you know, who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, who's exempt from vaccinations, who needs to wear a mask? Um, you know, obviously we encourage everybody to wear a mask, but you know, if right now, if you're fully vaccinated, you don't necessarily need to wear a mask in most locations. So this is a powerful tool for those in leadership position and all staff, frankly, they could just go to this dashboard, they can click a tab, and they can click any location in the organization and they can tell in real time who should be wearing a mask. Um, and just as I said before, you know, we're, we're tracking all of uh, this information also for our population. So in real time, we'll be able to tell, um, you know, what person, which person serves, have various uh, COVID statuses. And also what, what are the statuses of their own vaccines? You know, like who needs a vaccine? Who needs a follow-up? Uh, you know, who are, 
who doesn't want to get vaccinated so we so we can keep track of this. This takes all the guesswork out of it and all staff could just go here to see in real time. And it's it's pretty much all these all this data is updated every hour. So they can go here at any time and get some up-to-date information on what's going on. Next up, um, with COVID, we're also tracking supplies. You know, you got your PPE supplies, you got your non-PPE. So here we you can see in real time this. This information is provided by um, Bancroft's procurement department. So they're, they're keeping track of, um, in spreadsheets, all of our supplies, what's coming in, what's coming out. And Power BI takes all this information and it can visualize it for all staff. So very easily, you know, break it down for me. Where are we at with all these things? What do we need to order? Uh, what locations are waiting? Let's get it out to them. This, this can, these visuals can tell us that in real time. And, with that, you know, those in leadership positions, it, it makes sense. You want to still be able to keep track of, you know, how much money is going towards all of this. So in real time, we, we can break down where our spending is going as far as PPE. You know, where's it going as far as location um, and our costs over time. So, yeah, we can, we can track all of this stuff. So I think. I think that's everything I had as far as the slides themselves. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, j just just an example, you know, um, very high level of uh, some of the things we're looking at. Thank you, Chris. And again, you know, Chris expresses these three C's. I don't know how many of you were on our last podcast or our last webinar where we talked about data literacy, but you know, the three C's are critical thinking, creativity, and curiosity. You know, Chris and the, the, the Bancroft team exhibit all of those things. You know, they're curious about the data, they're creative in their approach, and they think critically about it. So, you know, it, it, it's great to work with a team like that. Um, and uh, they have, um, like I said, uh, the, the, it's, about, it's all about the building this model out, right? Bringing all this data in, building out the model, you know, Chris comes with ideas. Okay, I need these calculations. I need this and that. And then, you know, we have to we have to make that happen. So he doesn't have to worry about, um, you know, building those calculations on the fly. They're all ready. They're all ready for him and ready to. Yeah, and um, John, let me just add um, that everything you just said is um, absolutely correct. First of all, but there another great reason why you know we're so. Um, number one, transparent with you, with our data, our needs, where we're at with everything, but also why we stress so much, like, you know, the need to make sure we're on top of everything, we're adding what's needed, we're working together with you with all these calculations is because we need them. There is so many places now where staff is utilizing this information. Maybe they can pull from the data warehouse directly. They can pull from Power BI. They can pull this into other systems. But when, you know, they're expecting something and it's not necessarily showing what they expect or, you know, there, there could be something broken somewhere. It helps when there's so much transparency. It helps with the troubleshooting. So if we just send it to Pinnacle, like, hey, we need this, then that's it. But if down the road we find out that something is inaccurate, I mean, we really have to look at ourselves because how much did we bet that data once it was finalized? What I like to do is have various ways or basically various checks and balances kind of, I guess. Whereas, yeah, you know, Power BI is looking at something, but, you know, something can be calculated wrong. Something can be calculated wrong in the data warehouse. So it's nice to have the same thing calculated in so many different areas so that we, we can look to make sure that, you know, it's accurate. So if there's a difference between the two, let's find out what's going on. Or, you know, somebody could just be entering something in CCP wrong. We were, we're not going to know otherwise. So that's why it's so good to have like, you know, all these things refined in so many different areas. So that way, you know, if something's not lining up in one area, but it's showing a different number some, somewhere else, let's look at and see where that disconnect is. But if we're only having that value in one location, there's nothing to check that against to make sure it's correct. So it goes without saying over time, the organization it needs this data so much, we need it to be as accurate as possible. And if it's not accurate, we have so many layers now of safety nets kind of to make sure that we can troubleshoot it as easily as possible. You know, 
you can have a calculation that's just a variable in another calculation that's just a variable in another calculation. We need to look at all of those layers to make sure that everything's calculating correctly. Um, so that's why, yeah, to your point, we need to, you know, we need to con continuously improve this. We need to ask the questions. We need to, you know, be able to think outside the box. And I don't like just sitting there and just assuming that, you know, everything's correct. You know, we need to keep our due diligence and make sure we keep looking at this and making sure all the calculations are correct and make sure that as we continue enhancements and CCP is a great example, things change all the time. We, we have a developer that's constantly updating forms, doing enhancements, changing calculations. Is every piece of data that looks at that, the data warehouse, Power BI, every other forms of reporting we're doing, is it staying up to date and make sure all those changes are being reflected, all those new enhancements are being reflected in all of our calculations. So it's never in battle, but you know, it's a, it's a battle we need to fight. And, you know, it's pretty exciting because, you know, we're always looking at, you know, new and great things with data. And, you know, if we have a great idea, we're able to move with it. So, you know, it's, it's all good. It's fun. Excellent. Excellent. Any questions from the group? Anyone have any, Thing they'd like to bring up or see again or ask a question about? I'll go. Um, just I've, I've noticed that many of the numbers were sort of by team in, in what you were showing, Chris. Have you have you done the like per capita? I'm assuming that all the teams are sort of different sizes, and so is do you have you had a, a need to sort of compare? costs per employee, say, of PPE across different teams? No. All right. So the best way I can answer this, as far as cost, we have not broken that down to the person. Um, although I can fully respect how that's important, but we have looked at how that can be important with other forms of data. So like, uh, you know, when you're looking at missed appointments, you're looking at um, serious, uh, certain data where numbers and values are broken out by department, that doesn't necessarily paint the full picture, right? Because one department can have like three staff members where another row is a different department, but that department might have 153 staff members. So to your point, with that, it is pretty important to look at rate to be able to break things down to the individual level. So with other forms of data, yes, we have absolutely done that. Um, haven't done that with anything with costs yet, but only because we haven't been specifically requested yet to do so. Okay, thank you. So basically the supervisors sort of have a sense of how big their teams are and they can mentally do that math, I guess. If Correct, yep. Needed. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Any other questions? Hey, Chris, Bob Hodgson, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I think, I think we met at uh, one of the Harris, the last Harris conference that pre-COVID, but anyway, mm -hmm. um, you, were in, you were in CCP at that time and we were still in profile. Right. We to go yeah, to last, last time there. I was uh, uh, at a Harris conference, I was the, uh, the system administrator for uh, CCP itself. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I remember. But um, yeah, unfortunately, we uh, didn't didn't go the CCP way. Uh, but uh, so we, we work with what we got. But mm -hmm. how many people do you have working uh, with the data warehouse? Now, when you say working with the data warehouse, are you talking about like, uh, like under the hood? Um, or as yeah, far as I, I guess utilizing maybe. the reports from it? Yeah, I realized when I asked that, that maybe that I should phrase it a little differently. For data analytics, what's your breakdown on your team then as far as who does what and how many people are working on this? That, and, um, you know, Amari and Fino are absolutely free to, you know, to, to add or correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I got to tell you, it's not many people. Um, we have myself, of course. We have Amari. Um, we do have... Um, at least two business um, analysts who are also, you know, always deep diving under the hood with our um, our data warehouse data um, and are kind of like also taking a lead with uh, discussions with staff that could result in refinements to the data warehouse itself. 
Um, we have our current CCP administrator who is uh, knowledgeable with uh, data warehouse um, data itself. Um, and we also have a, a, a reporting analyst um, who works with uh, Sean and Pitical also. So I'd probably say um, off the top of my head, maybe, um, maybe like five, six people. And that includes both Fina and Amari on this call as well. So not, not that many people. Yeah. Oh, I need to shout out. I don't think I've ever met Amari, but I need to shout out to Flina because I remember, remember Flina. Anyway, um, so what is, what is the difference in your organization between the business analyst and the reporting analyst? What are those well, roles? One of the big differences um, uh, our business analysts are, are kind of like quasi uh, project managers, whereas a big part of what they do is they are the, um, they're kind of like the representatives of our departments with uh, stakeholders as far mm -hmm. as requirements gathering um, for any projects, um, especially um, where CCP is concerned, uh, our, you know, our EHR and various other applications. Um, they're the ones that kind of take that um, take that information from our from discovery meetings and they um, bring that to us um, as far as administrators, developers to kind of queue up that work, uh, you know, and talk about the, the more technical aspects of of what staff members are requesting. Now, our reporting analysts um, is not so much. Um, being a project manager as far as going to meetings, gathering requirements, things like that. But our uh, report analyst almost kind of like doubles as a, as a um, DBA, whereas our report analyst is like our subject matter expert as far as our internal database administration. Um, he is our internal um, subject matter expert as far as, you know, working with Sean for the, um, the infrastructure aspect of uh, data warehousing. Um, and he's also, he, he's our guru with uh, SQL reporting, SQL reporting, reporting services. So as far as CCP and our EHR, one great example is um, in CCP, there's um, a reports area where all of our CCP reports live. Uh, we build a ton of CCP reports in-house um, that staff can um, utilize. And our reports, uh, our report analyst, he is the guy that's like in charge of those reports. He's the one building them, um, refining them and things like that. So he, he's kind of like um, our guru as far as reporting um, within our EHR itself. And then he also manages our, uh, our databases, so. Okay, great, good explanation. Excellent. Any other questions or comments or? In your incident reporting, um, you have a full, if I remember right, you have a full crisis team program, right? Hotline to as, as far as um, incident management itself? Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, we, it's, um, it's our uh, risk and compliance department, um, specifically the risk team. Um, they are um, responsible for um, maintaining the accuracy of our incident reporting. They're the ones who do the, uh, the follow up with staff and leaderships as far as what's on an incident report. And they are also the ones um, who internally at Bancroft, they, they do the, uh, the, the investigations as far as what um, occurred in an incident report. Okay. So these are internal. These are internal incidents, then. Correct. Yeah. These um. Right. These are. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, obviously, uh, incident can still occur off site, off property, right. but it's still under the supervision of Bancroft staff. So yes, it is still internal to Bancroft staff um, themselves. Okay. All right. And so this, this includes like mandatory reporting 
incidents as well as internal incidents then? Or? Yeah, um, to the best of my knowledge, uh, yeah. So I'm not aware of us uh, recording um, the information of incidents elsewhere. Um, I think it's all within CCP now. So mandatory or not, everything is in there now and everything is, um, is being reported. Now, for the sake of transparency, not all incident reports roll up to Power BI. The only report, the only incident reports that roll up to Power BI are those that are considered uh, mandatory state reportable. So anything that has right. to then be reported to a state agency, those are reports that have to be in Power BI. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I was trying to get the clarification. So, mm -hmm. so you also you also do your internal uh, staff, um, I guess, quality incidents where you look at complaints within you know from clients or consumers. Do you do that in in CCP also? I, I don't think we do that in CCP. Now, okay. anything in regards to staff. We do have other HR applications where that may be tracked, okay. and we are slowly starting to bring that information into various uh, cubes in our data warehouse. So, right, we don't have that in Power BI yet, but right now we're we're at the infancy of bringing all of those other HR applications into our data warehouse. So that, in my opinion, that that's like like a future goal for a future fiscal year. Um, uh, one great example is um, one of our dashboards that we're just rolling out is a diversity and inclusion dashboard, and that breaks down like certain like uh, staff complaints, things like that, where we can break it down by like eth ethnicity and things like that. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that regardless of the visuals that we're building, we need to be able to track that data. So we're in our infancy. We're, we're basically expanding um, what data we're tracking as far as that's concerned. All right. Interesting. Now, do you also do um, crisis support at the hospitals? Do you have a? We do you have crisis my, support? I, I think um, maybe Amari, but I think only Fina can. I, I, I don't know that myself. I do know we have some Bancroft programs, which um, I know the name of those programs do have hospitals like CHOP, but I'm not sure if they're. Um, crisis or anything like that but i do know we we do have uh information that do, that do roll up to hospital systems okay all right are you are you tied in with with ccp do you tie into any uh health information exchanges that that you get information from and include that in your data warehouse then or we do have that in CCP, but I do not believe we have that rolling up to the data warehouse yet. I do okay. expect that to be something in the future, but we don't currently have that on the roadmap. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. I've monopolized enough of your time, but <laughs> good question. No problem at all. Good. Any other questions from anyone today? Sean, it looks like Janet just joined us. Oh, hi, Janet. Um, Sorry about that. I was hoping that one of my colleagues was going to join, so I will catch up. <laughs> well, and we we recorded this presentation, awesome. and so you can make it make it awesome. make it available to you I, afterward. I I was in another call. I tried to jump off as soon as I could, but they were exactly at the same time, so I apologize. No worries. You want to introduce yourself quick? Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Janet Stringfellow. And actually, let me turn the camera on. I usually always do camera. And um, I serve as the president and CEO of Volunteers of America, Florida. Oh, good. Very good. Well, good to, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Friday. Happy mm -hmm. Friday to you as well. Thank you. Well, um, yeah, we can, like I said, make this available to you after the fact, and you can review it if you'd like. I appreciate that. Very good. Well, Chris, we're, we're, we're so appreciative of the time you've taken today and your preparation and your presentation. It's a pleasure as always working with you. Um, thank you again so much. And thanks everybody for attending today. Um, if anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to email me 
um, and uh, look for emails on future meetings. So thanks everyone for attending. Okay.